Over the last couple of weeks, there's been some unusually cold weather affecting parts of the Northern Hemisphere. The kind of extreme cold that you just don't normally see at such low latitudes because the jet stream usually keeps that kind of weather much further north. And while the destabilization of the jet stream should have you rightly worried, it's basically becoming less and less stable due to climate change, which in turn leads to really crazy weather patterns. The talk right now has focused on how freaking cold it got in parts of the US and Europe and how that cold has affected our day to day lives. I'm not going to go into the whole list of things that have happened as a consequence of the massive polar vortex. But when it comes to transportation, specifically plug in vehicles, there's one story that keeps coming up again and again, both in the mainstream media and on some green newscast sites and YouTube channels. Cold versus electric car range. Depending on whom you listen to, this cold snap has either proved that electric cars aren't up to quote, real world life, has cast a doubt over the longevity of electric car battery packs, or in some cases even implied that Tesla isn't designing its cars correctly. I've already covered cold weather and electric cars on this channel before, but now it feels like a good time to revisit the topic and explain just why electric cars have seemingly lost an awful lot of range in this cold winter, and why your brand new Tesla Model 3, Nissan Leaf, Chevrolet Bolt, or whatever else you recently purchased, seems to have some pretty big issues with range in this winter. And it's not about the heater either, at least not all about it. Usually, of course, at this point, I'd get Erin to animate something, but because the story is in the spotlight right now, and Erin's actually working from home today because we have sheet ice on our local roads, I'm afraid that for now you're stuck with stock footage. On to the video. So why do electric cars travel less far in cold weather? The answer has everything to do with electrochemistry and perhaps a little more heater use than usual. And while I'm going to go through the basics here, I'll save the really heavy science for electrochemical engineer Ed Fronts, whose excellent blog post on this subject really fills in the blanks if you're feeling particularly nerdy. Electric cars, battery electric cars at least, rely on a stream of electricity from their battery pack in order to operate. When charging, the battery pack turns electrical energy into chemical energy. Then when it's discharging, that same battery pack turns the chemical energy back into electrical energy. And as I'm sure you know, batteries are made up of three main components, the cathode, the anode, and the electrolyte. The cathode and the anode are made of different materials and charge passes between them during the charging and discharging of the battery. That electrolyte is either a liquid or a gel, unless it's a solid state battery, of course, but since there are no solid state battery electric cars in production right now, we can ignore that bit. And as the temperature drops, the conductivity, that's how easily electricity can pass through the electrolyte, drops, which increases electrical resistance. This means more energy is needed to push the electrons through the electrolyte, which in turn means that the voltage of the battery pack and the usable capacity of that pack both drop. At the cathode and the anode too, there are slowdowns because there's less kinetic energy in the battery. All molecules have less energy as temperature drops, which in turn means that chemical reactions happen a little more slowly too. This all combines to result in a pack that's less eager to give its power up, resulting in reduced capacity, reduced voltage, and reduced range. To keep all of these electrochemical slowdowns in check, many electric car manufacturers use active thermal management in their car's battery pack, using power from the battery pack itself to heat the battery pack to the same kind of room temperatures that we humans are happy at. The negative side to this, though, is that energy used to heat up the battery can't then be used for travel, so there will be a small drop in range in normal weather conditions in the winter. Because you like to be warm too, I'm guessing you also use the heater in your car, which, even if it's an efficient heat pump, which by the way, become much less efficient in super cold weather, will also take a little usable range from your car's battery pack. Then there are all of the things that affect any vehicle, which all zap a little range in winter. For example, the colder it gets, the more dense air becomes. That means it's harder for your car to push through the air when it's moving, and it has to use more energy to push through the air for any given speed where compared to less dense hot summer air. 
It's also more likely to be windy in winter, which again, if you're in a headwind, increases the aerodynamic resistances your car has to overcome to move along the road. Add in snow-packed roads, which increase rolling resistance of your tyres and mean your car has to work harder to push itself along at a given speed. And sadly, it's just basic physics. I should note too that absolutely any type of car suffers these last things in winter months. And just like a traction battery struggles when temperatures drop, so too do starter batteries on internal combustion engine cars. Voltage drops occur there due to increased internal resistance, as well as increased mechanical resistance in the starter motor and engine, which contributes to making starter motors work harder in the winter and leads to all of those dead batteries around February in ICE cars. So I've just explained all the reasons why winter weather is tough on EVs, and you'll be pleased to know, though, that automakers do include things to help overcome these problems namely battery pack insulation and active thermal management. Leave your car unplugged in frigid temperatures below zero and your car will have to use more of its stored energy to keep the battery pack warm, which will in turn take range away from your vehicle. Plug the car in and leave it plugged in until you need to use it and the battery pack will be kept warm using power from the electrical grid, which will save you range. Why was this Polar Vortex so bad on electric cars though? Well, truth be told, it was tough on all cars, decreasing fuel economy across the board. And the colder it gets, the harder your vehicle has to work, regardless of what it uses to power it. So Nikki, I hear you say, does this mean electric cars are rubbish at the North Pole? Well, to that, I have a simple answer, no. In places where winter temperatures are super cold every single year, electric car owners tend to know what they need to do to keep their cars happy, keep the car plugged in when not using it, and if possible, park it in a garage, just like they would for an internal combustion engine car. The issue with last week's Polar Vortex, however, was that not everyone could or did exactly those things. Parking your car outside at negative 50 with wind chill for eight hours when you're at work will absolutely kill EV range. Parking it outside your house without plugging it in will do the same. And since super cold places tend to have outlets for every parking spot for engine block heaters, it's more likely that those in places where it regularly gets really cold will be able to keep their car's battery pack warm more easily than those who normally only have moderately cold weather every year. That's it. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you liked it or you didn't like it below. Scribble a comment. And if you want to support the show, there are a whole host of links below to help you do just that. I'll be back soon with another episode, but until then, keep evolving.